this this is it. Well, this is a report. Okay. China Security Times uh, saying that they're going to uh, pay or they have paid this coupon that was due 30, 29 days ago. Actually, okay. the 30 day grace period expired uh, expires tomorrow mm. on Saturday, October 23rd. Uh, but if this is true, that would avoid the default and that they, as speculated, they would use the full 30 days. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, just uh, just a recap, of course, uh, what we are hearing here from the Securities Times here. So. Uh, Evergrande, 29 days ago, as Steve was mentioning there, uh, missing that interest payment. It's not principal interest payment. It's 83 million, that's U.S. dollars. That 30-day grace period expires tomorrow. If it doesn't, of course, meet that payment, then technical default. And we'll see, of course, what uh, whether you're talking analysts and you're looking at how some of these dollar bonds, of course, are trading. Ratings agencies might that then trigger... Uh, if they didn't make or if they don't make that payment, might that then trigger them, of course, calling this a default? Stephen Engel, stay here with us, of course. We've sorted out the mic issues. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. We had breaking news, so I was rushed into the studio. But uh, again, this would be a significant development. Uh, they've kept fairly quiet over those 30 days, obviously, and authorities have been ramping up the uh, rhetoric as well. We had Yi Gong uh, over the weekend. We had uh, Liu He, the vice premier. We had uh, the deputy PBOC governor, and then also uh, Liu Zhong Rei, the CBIRC, the bank. Banking regulator, uh, one of the senior officials, all saying that this is an isolated case, essentially, Evergrande, and that the risks in the property sector are fairly containable. Uh, again, though, it, it looked as though they were ring fencing. Evergrande, uh, whether it were all bets were on that they were going to default or not necessarily pay, uh, given the pricing of the bonds down on, what, 22 cents on the dollar. Right. Uh, but it looks as though, if this report is true, uh, at least for this coupon payment they are going to meet if the Security Times report is true. However, keep in mind, they had three coupon payments uh, due on October 11th as well, which, by all accounts, went unpaid. So there are many, many more liabilities uh, that they still have to reach. And they, this comes on the heels of that collapse of the deal for the property services arm yep. that we learned about yesterday with Hobson. And Hobson putting out a pretty sharply worded statement to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange saying uh, they're alleging that Evergrande reneged on some of their obligations on payment schedule and the like after signing a deal for that 50.1 percent stake in Evergrande Property Services. Uh, that was pretty much a foregone conclusion. Now that fell apart, of course. That was for $2.6 billion. That would have gone a long ways to pay a lot of these short-term liabilities, obviously. Uh, but Hobson saying in this statement the request was unacceptable because original terms were negotiated and agreed. Evergrande failed to perform its obligations. If this report is true from the China Security Times, it looks as though, at least for this coupon payment, they're meeting their obligations. Well, I, I guess in a lot of ways, the next question then becomes, because, fine, the deal fell through. That was arguably the best set of assets that they could have disposed of to raise Absolutely. some money. Uh, at the same time, though, if, if, if this report is true, that they did, or at least were able to pay dollar bonds at the interest dollar of bonds, that, yeah. it does send a very good signal to the markets that, you know, for, for the longest, at least past last couple of weeks or so, the narrative was, you know, the last, you know, last in line to be paid are these offshore bondholders. Yeah. Doesn't all this then bode well moving forward, short term? Well, it, there's some other good positive signs. Uh, Red News Source is also reporting that uh, they've negotiated, Evergrande has negotiated uh, some sort of agreement for a three-month extension on this bond from through this joint venture, Jumbo Fortune, uh, through Hungdao Real Estate, which is the domestic arm of Evergrande, that they've negotiated a three-month extension of that dollar bond. Uh, so it looks as though they are willing to negotiate, and that's why we had the story as well overnight saying that many of these creditors are looking to talk or at least enter into negotiations uh, with Evergrande rather than seeing an outright default, then a massive scramble for, you know, payment from all the different, you know, creditors and shareholders. And who gets, you know, holding the, the empty right, hat at the end of the day. Is, the, is, is essentially uh, speculated the dollar bondholders.